so let's talk about this RSA exercise. So we've already covered how to use RSA to encrypt uh, a message where the message is given by an integer. We've also talked about how to decrypt that uh, encrypted message if we know a factorization of the public key n. And so what I want to talk about today is actual implementation. And so as humans we're more used to reading messages that are strings of characters instead of integers. And so the first thing we're going to have to do is uh, encode messages. Right? So if I give you a string, um, we're going to want to convert that to an integer in a, in a specified way. And ASCII is the standard way to represent characters as numbers. Right? So I'm going to call this ASCII encoding. Um, so every character is going to be attached to an integer. Uh, so for example, the capital letter A gets encoded as a 65. We can access the ASCII encoding of characters very easily in Python. So the command here is ORD. So if I do ORD of capital A, remember the quotes around A to tell Python this is a string, I get the integer 65. And I can go back um, if I want the character that 65 represents, um, I, I type the command chr. Right. We want to be able to send messages that are longer than um, a single character. So for example, if I want to send this message uh, help, right, then I could just compute uh, ord of each character. So h is 72. Um, E is 101, and I could just keep doing this for every character in the message S and come up with a list of integers that represent the string. Okay, so one way to do this uh, more easily is I can use this um, this Python feature about for, for creating these lists, and so I can compute the ord of each character uh, for C in the string S. Right. And so if I do that, I get this list 72, 101, 108, 112, 33. And this is representing the ORD values of each of the characters in that string S. OK. Now, I want to be able to view that as a single integer. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to view each of these integers as a digit in the base 256 expansion of uh, an integer m. Right, so what does that mean? So this message help is 72, 101, 108, 112, 33, and that's the base 256 expansion of the integer I'm after. Okay. So now if I want to compute the actual integer in base 10, then I just got to take each of these digits and multiply it by the correct value of uh, the correct power of 256. And I get this number 31093925072 right so this big number uh, represents the string help exclamation point okay right well I don't want to have to do all of this typing um, every time and so what I'm going to do is just write a some Python functions that allow me to handle this more easily okay so let's take a look. What's the sort of thing that we want to do? So you'll open up a, a file to hold your script. Okay. So I want first a function that takes a string s and tells me um, the integer that corresponds to it. All right. So def. Maybe I'll need the name for the function. Maybe I'll call it string to int. Right? It's going to take as input a string s, and it's going to convert uh, s to ASCII and return the uh, base 10 number corresponding to the base 256.
Okay, so how can I do this? Well, this command, this list comprehension that we did earlier is going to work. Right? If I do ORD C for C in S, what that's going to do is compute the ASCII encoding for each character in the string S. Let me give that uh, a name so that it stores. Right, so base 256 is ORD C for C in S. But it's the list of numbers. I want to multiply each of those numbers by uh, the correct power of 256 and then return the sum. Right, so M is, well, since this is something I'm going to do over and over again, maybe I'll give this a function. I'll, I'll define a function here as well. So this will be base 256 to int of um, base 256. So that's what I want to do. And then I'm going to return M. Now if I just tried to run this in, um, well I've got to save it somewhere. Let's save it to my desktop as a sample RSA. So if I just tried to run this, um, Python doesn't complain yet. But if I try to call the function string to int of, uh, let's say, this string help, oops, um, Python's going to complain. It's going to complain that base to 256, base 256 to int is not defined, and that's a fair complaint. We haven't told it what that does. Um, so let's write it. So this is going to take as input a base 256 expansion, so it's a list of integers that I'm viewing as the digits, and it's going to return return uh, the base 10 expansion of L, where L is in base 256. Okay, so what am I going to have to do? Well, remember, all we have to do is take each digit of L, multiply it by the correct uh, power of 256, and then add those up. And so since I'm adding up a bunch of things, let me keep track of a total. So I'm going to initialize the total as 0. And then I'm going to do something for every digit in L. So for i in uh, range length of L, I'm going to do some things, right? I want to take li and multiply it by uh, 256 raised to the ith power. And I'm going to take that and add it to my total. And then return. If I just had this, then um, it's not quite right. So i, when it goes over the range of the length of l, um, the first time through i is 0, second time through i is 1, and 2, and so on. Um, but those are the wrong exponents to be using if I'm marching my way through the base 256 expansion of l. And so one thing I need to do here um, is I need to reverse the order of the digits in l. And so the command to do that is l.reverse. And so that reverses the entries in L. But now the first, the, like L0, is going to correspond to exponent 0. And then I can add up those totals. So let's try to run that um, and just test, test it out. So if I do string to int of the string help exclamation point, uh, oops, I'm expecting to get this 310 39250721, just as described on the sheet. Perfect. All right, so now we have a method of uh, converting a string to an integer. Good. I also need um, a way to go from an integer back to the string. So let's define a function int to string. This is going to take an integer m. Oops. 
and return the string corresponding to m. All right. So how do I do that? Well, first I'm going to get the uh, the base 256 expansion of n uh, of m, and that'll be some list l, right? So this will be the base. 256 expansion. Well, we have this function from an earlier programming exercise, and let me just go ahead and grab that here. It allows us to compute base b expansions, right? So let me define that function here. So the base b expansion of n base b is given like this. And so I have this base expansion of, well, I want to compute the base 256 expansion of M. And that'll be L. And then for each of these digits, uh, what I want to do, each of these digits in L, I want to um, compute the string, the character that corresponds to that digit, and then append it to my, my message. So I'm going to have this message, uh, well, I guess initially it will just be the empty message. And then for each um, digit in L, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take that digit, and I'm going to compute the, uh, the character that corresponds to that digit. So chr of digit, and I'm going to tack that on to my message. Okay, and then finally, when that's done, I can return my message. Let's save and try that. So I computed earlier that help in ASCII encoding is going to be this long number here, according to our convention. So if I compute int to string of that number, I'm hoping I get the message help, which I do. Great. So now we have a way of going um, from a string to an integer and from an integer back to a string. Let's go back to our exercise here. And so one of the things that um, I want you to do, the first thing I want you to do, is write code like I just wrote, that we just worked through, uh, for compute converting from strings to integers and from integers back to strings. And the first exercise is just to encode your birthday um, in ASCII under this convention, and then you'll get this integer m that um, you're going to use. Okay. What I want you to do after that is take this public key. So my public key is capital N is this big number here. My encryption exponent is this 65537. And I want you to encrypt your birthday integer m, your birthday, um, using my public key. And then you're going to enter this integer on the assignment in Canvas. OK, so remember, if you're encrypting using RSA, all you have to do is compute m raised to the encryption exponent e and reduce that mod n. Right? And you're going to want to use fast exponentiation to do that. And you have code for fast exponentiation. Okay. After you do that, next I want you to go to this website, magma.maths.ucid.edu.au. Right? Let me show you what that is. That is, uh, Magma is a computer algebra system, and they have this online window where you can access the server that is running a copy of Magma uh, to do some number theory uh, and computer algebra computations. Okay, so what I want you to do is try to use Magma to factor my public key. Right, and so the syntax is going to be this this command factorization with a capital F, you're going to put in the number, and then you're going to put in a semicolon, and then you're going to submit that code. 
when you do, uh, depending on various things, magma will run the computation and come up with your factorization. So here, that's one prime number, and this is the other prime number. The one tells you it's, it has exponent one. Um, and so the fact that you were able to factor my public key is a sign that uh, my public key is way too small, right? So you found uh, integers p and q that allow you to crack my RSA public key. So I want you to use the, the factorization that you get um, in order to crack a secret message, right? So you're going to be able to compute the Euler phi function of my public key n because you know the prime factors p and q. You're going to be able to use extended Euclidean algorithm to find a decryption exponent, and that'll be a inverse of e modulo phi of n. And remember, you want to take this um, decryption exponent positive. So what does that mean? Well, um, when you compute using extended Euclidean algorithm an inverse of e mod phi of n, you might end up with a negative number, right? And since you're going to want to use fast exponentiation, you don't want that negative e number to be your exponent. And so you can make uh, a positive decryption exponent by just computing the positive integer that's in the same class modulo phi of n as this decryption exponent d. Right? I want you to use that decryption exponent to decrypt this secret message that I'm sending you. You're going to use the decryption procedure that I describe up here, which is basically once you've computed the decryption exponent d, if you raise the encrypted message c to that power and reduce mod n, you're going to find the message m. Right? The thing to notice here is this message m is going to be an integer, and so you're going to have to use the, um, the decoding using ASCII to change it back to a string message that you can read in human readable form. And the last part of the exercise is just to uh, post the string that you find in the discussion board that I've set up for Python and RSA. You can also post questions concerning this assignment um, there.